Hello guys, what's going on? Um, in this video, I'd just like to show you how to configure the autopilot panel in the Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, um, by default, it will be either Essentials, Assigned, or All. We're going to want to go to All. And I'm using a profile for the sake of this video to test it out or whatever. Make sure you have the profile that you want to use. And click the drop-down menu that says Autopilot. And we're going to be looking for things that end in index. For example, set autopilot altitude slot index. And that's going to be this dial right here, the one on the left, the one that says altitude, vertical speed, heading, you know, all that stuff. And now, this is going to be a little confusing at first, but you'll, you'll get it once we do it a couple times. We're going to want to make sure that it is in the vertical speed conf uh, config in order to program the altitude slot. And it's what, why we're doing this is we're going to press it like this, like this because it's a momentary button which means that it's basically being held down right here it's not a toggle really so we have to go from vertical speed to altitude and then back to vertical speed to confirm the button so let's just do a little example right here set autopilot altitude slot index start scanning make sure it is in vertical speed flick it to altitude and as you can see it registers that we press the altitude button and then just flick it back and click validate and we're going, to be days, we're going to be doing the same thing for everything. So we're going to look for vertical speed. So just type in vertical speed right here. And look for vertical speed index. Here it is, autopilot vertical slot index. Now for this, we're going to set it to altitude. And we're going to do the same thing, same principle, same rule. Click it, start scanning. OK, so we're going to go from altitude to vertical speed, back to altitude to confirm the button press. So vertical speed, as you can see, it registers I press the vertical speed button, and then back to altitude and validate. And the next thing we're going to do is heading. I've just typed it in right here so that it's easier for me to find. Set autopilot heading slot index. Now, same rule apply right here. Vertical, uh, vertical speed in this case. And we're going to flick it from vertical speed to heading back to vertical speed. Click it. Start scanning. Make sure it's in vertical speed. To heading. And as you can see, it registers that we press the heading button. And then back to vertical speed to confirm the button press. Validate. Now the next one on this dial is CRS, but I don't have it binded to anything, and I don't know what to bind it to, because I don't know what CRS is, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. But the next thing I have binded is IAS, which is the last one on here. Like I said, the next thing we're going to do is the IAS, or the speed, whatever. And like I said, set it to CRS, then IAS, and then back to CRS again. And as you can see, set autopilot speed slot index. Now this is what works on the Airbus A320. This is what I usually fly Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, because I really don't like flying the 747, I like the smaller, you know, airliners. So make sure it's in CRS. We're going to flick it to IAS and then back to CRS, like I said. Click on it. Start scanning. All right, switch it to IAS. And as you can see, it is registered that we press the IAS button. And we're going to flick it back to confirm that we press the button. And click validate. Now, the next thing we're going to be doing is making use of the right dial, the increase and decrease dial. So now this one can get a little bit... Uh, I guess time consuming, but it's pretty easy to do. It's pretty straightforward. And we're going to be looking for basically decrease and increase uh, inputs right here. So we have decrease autopilot reference altitude and increase autopilot reference altitude. Decrease is first, so that's what we're going to do. Now we're going to basically be doing the same principle as we did for these binds right here, where we go from vertical speed to altitude and back to vertical speed to register the button press. But we're going to be doing it while simultaneously turning this to the left because it's decrease. And I'll show you what I mean right here in this example. So decrease autopilot reference altitude. Click on it. Make sure your dial on the left side is in vertical speed. Start scanning. And flick it to altitude while turning to the left. And then flick it back to vertical speed to confirm that button press. And it's what this is doing, because you're telling the simulator that when you want, when you have the altitude button pressed, you want the altitude to change. When you have the vertical speed button pressed, you want the vertical speed to change. It's basically just giving you like an index slot. That's exactly what it is. So now we're going to do the same thing for altitude increase. So back to vertical speed. Click on it. Start scanning. Same principle, except we're going to be turning it to the right for increase. So to altitude, turning it to the right, and then back to vertical speed to confirm the button press. And as what we're doing here is what we just did is we made a button combination. As you can see, there's two buttons being pressed in order to change this input. So that means that when we have vertical speed pushed on the uh, dial, we don't really change it because vertical speed is not a part of the button combination. But when we change it to altitude button on the dial, 
and we do decrease and increase, it changes it because it is a part of the button combination that we just created. And we're going to do that for all of them. So next is vertical speed, decrease and increase. Okay, so once you scroll down a ways, you'll see decrease autopilot reference, vertical speed, and increase. Now we're going to be doing the same principle. So we're going to turn to altitude, vertical speed, and then back to altitude while simultaneously scrolling the uh, dial right here. So make sure it's set to altitude, click on it, start scanning, and go to vertical speed while turning it to the left, and then back to altitude to confirm button press. Validate. Same with increase, so make sure it's set to altitude, which it is. We're going to turn to vertical speed while turning it to the right since it's increase. So start scanning, vertical speed, turn to the right, and turn it back to altitude to confirm the button press. And then click validate. Next is heading, so we'll go there now. Now, the heading increase and decrease will not be found in the autopilot section. Instead, it will actually be found in the instruments and systems tab. So click the drop down menu, go to flight instruments, and we're going to be looking for a heading bug decrease and increase. So here we go. Increase heading bug and decrease heading bug right here. So make sure it's set to vertical speed so that we can go from vertical speed heading and then back to vertical speed. And since we're doing decrease, we're going to uh, we're going to turn the dial to the left and let's just begin. So start scanning. So to heading and turn left and then back to vertical speed to confirm the button press. Validate. Same principle goes with increase except when you're returning the dial to the right. Right. Increase heading bug, start scanning, to heading, and then turning right, and then back to vertical speed to confirm the button press. So we're just turning it to the right to uh, increase, turning it to the left to decrease, because that's what is labeled on the Bravo throttle quadrant. And then click validate. So let's go to altitude, for example. Decrease, increase does nothing. Vertical speed, decrease, increase does nothing. Heading, however, increase and decrease. will decrease and increase your heading direction on the autopilot panel. Next is CRS, which, like I said, I do not use. I don't have it binded. I don't know what it does in the real world, so I just skipped right over in the programming process of my personal profile. However, we have IAS next. Okay, now to do the speed or the IAS section on our dial, we're going to be going back to the autopilot tab. Click the drop down menu. We're going to scroll all the way down until we find, let me find it, decrease and increase reference speed. Okay, so I found it right down here. It was a little bit of the ways, but um, same rule applies. Decrease and increase reference airspeed. We're going to go from CRS to IAS and then back to CRS to confirm the button press while simultaneously turning left or right depending on the decrease or increase function. So we're going to be doing decrease first. Make sure your dial is set to the CRS section, which it is. We're going to be turning it to the left while pressing the button down to make a button combination. So start scanning. I'm going to go IAS and then back to CRS while turning to the left, uh, this dial to the left that is, and validate. Now for increase, make sure it's in CRS position, which it is. Click on it, start scanning, and then to IAS while turning the right dial to the right, and then back to CRS to confirm the button press. Validate. Okay, now the only thing that's really left to do is the autopilot button, which I don't know if I have it in the shot of the camera. Okay, so to bind the buttons on the autopilot panel right here, I'm going to go back to the autopilot section, and we're going to be looking for toggle autopilot altitude hold for our altitude, which is what we'll do first, since it's right here. So go in right here, toggle autopilot altitude hold, set scanning, click the altitude button, and validate. That's all you have to do. You don't have to like do some fancy thing like we did with the dial. Okay, so we scroll down, we find the next one is approach hold. So we'll start scanning, hit the APR button, and validate. Okay, now for IAS, I have it binded to autopilot M1 hold, so start scanning press, you're good, validate, autopilot M1 hold, and now for nav, since nav is right here, autopilot nav 1 hold, press it in, validate, autopilot nav 1 hold, up next we have the um, toggle autopilot vertical speed hold, so click, start scanning, press the button in, validate, I actually passed it, but toggle autopilot heading hold is your bind for your heading button, start scanning, press it in, and validate, autopilot heading hold for your uh, heading button, you can just press it, make sure, as you can see, we're all good. So that is um, all the buttons except the last one, which is the big autopilot square right here, and that will be next. Okay, and for the big square autopilot uh, button right here, we're going to be looking for toggle autopilot master. So go ahead and start scanning, press, and validate, and of course just to make sure that we're good, toggle autopilot master, 
and that should be it so let's hop into a flight and double check that everything works okay, so we are actually in microsoft flight sim 2020 right now i am in an airbus i got us up in the air and i'm just going to showcase you know the things that we uh, just programmed so let's go over to the autopilot panel right here i don't know why that's on honestly but for altitude as you can see when i go to vertical speed for example the altitude doesn't change but when you go to altitude and you turn the dial, as you can see, it changes. And this is, has to do with the button combinations I was talking about earlier. And the fact that we, when we did the whole thing where we had to do this, both at once or whatever, that's what that was doing. That was doing, um, that was making it so that when we had heading, for example, it changed the heading and not all three of them at once. And it didn't change the altitude, the heading, and the speed at once. It actually just changed the heading. As you see, I'm turning the heading right now because I have it selected. Now for, for, uh, now for the vertical speed, Actually, for some reason, on Airbus doesn't show it right here. We have to go right here. So we press the vertical speed button on our autopilot panel. As you can see, vertical speed is engaged, and you can increase and decrease the vertical speed. But um, and also I'm not sure if you uh, caught the last one, but I turn heading on, and I can change the heading. I turn IAS or the speed or whatever. I change the speed, and if I turn it to IAS, I can change increase and decrease the speed so if I turn it down our engine should actually slow down autopilot button turns on as you can see autopilot turns on press it again autopilot turns off approach mode turns on approach mode turns off now I'm not sure if I mentioned this in our initial programming but I don't have the REV binded anything for the same reason I don't have the CRS binded to anything that's because I don't know what it does and I don't have a purpose for it same rules apply though for the CRS. So like if you wanted to bind your CRS to like a index for lights or something, I don't know, you go to CRS and then back to heading in order to bind it, to register it as an actual button press instead of just a holding down of a button. But uh, yeah, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, uh, let me know. If you have any issues or concerns or questions, please comment down in the comment section below. I'm not quite sure if I explained everything entirely uh, the best extent, but I tried to give a simple explanation. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, uh, like it or whatever. Peace out.